Hello anyone and everyone, I am Echo and today we are exploring abduction. We're here back in Farley's house for the moment because there was something else I wanted to check. Um, I realized that we listened to the tape of Farley talking her whole thing there. Um, but I actually didn't try pressing any of the other buttons. Um, obviously the record button seems to have been broken off. And, you know, that's because our character has no reason to want to record anything here. But I didn't try ejecting it, and we might want to take the tape with us or something. Or also, um, possibly listen to the other side, because old cassette tapes... This is actually really hard for me to remember, because I've never actually uh, owned any of my own cassette tapes. The only cassette tapes I ever even had contact with were ones that my like parents or older sisters used to use. Um, but I do remember older cassette tapes had like, uh, you know, you could flip them over to use the other side and uh, sometimes record different things on them because it would like, it would access the other side of the tape entirely. So we're just going to rewind it entirely and eject it. Yeah, like that. Can we take it with us or... No, okay, so it just gets flipped. Just like I thought, okay. Cool, alright, now let's uh, see if there's anything else. Well, it was just beautiful. 
was something calming about it. Yeah. That might tell you I was gonna freak it out. I tried to follow it. Stood him to look at it. Wanted to see it again. I came to a place where, where it had disappeared. Overlooked. But I found nothing. And it seemed to hear the sky again. It seemed like it was looking for something. Or looking for someone. And then it found me. And it found me. Found me. Okay, well, uh, despite that last part being slightly creepy with all of them talking over each other and finishing their sentences, um, yeah, basically, so that was a, uh, continuation of the opening thing. When the game begins, you hear Farley talking and talking about her, you know, her first experience being abducted along with CW and two other people. Uh, Vera was one of them, and then somebody else, I don't remember. <laughs> I can't remember their name. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, that was basically just a continuation of that with more detail and other, uh, nameless people chiming in at the end there. So that's cool. That's pretty neat. Um, and also, uh, it actually does bring up something that I forgot to mention in the last episode when we were listening to the, uh, um, whatchamacallit, where, uh, when the, fuck, what's, what's that, the tape recorder thing, yeah, when, when we were listening to the first recording of, uh, Farley talking, the, uh, tape recorder quality sounded exactly like the opening sound from, uh, the, from the opening of the game, and I had actually thought that it was probably... Uh, that was to explain why it she sounded like that during the opening, but didn't, uh, you know, I forgot to mention it. And unfortunately, right now I need to cut this real quick because I need to go take care of something. All right, and we're back now. So, uh, basically, the next thing I just wanted to do was, uh, go around and explore all of the teleportation things around the edge of the building. Like this one, which, uh, if my little map is correct, that should be, yeah, that should lead us to the other side of the water wheel, which is right there. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's see what's on the other side real quick. I don't suppose this leads to the waterfall, does it? Uh, nope, not quite. We can see the waterfall, but we cannot get up there by the looks of it. Alright. Ooh, but there's a thing down here. Oh, hey. That's an additional, uh, additional area. Where does that lead? I'm not sure. Could this be the one... Could this be the, uh, teleportation thing that, according to the map, was supposed to be up on the waterfall like I thought I thought there was th yeah in fact I remember it um, from the beginning of the game when we went up the little uh, water wheel powered elevator we got up to the top and uh, the oh, fuck, what's it called yeah the, the the barrier around the edge there was a part of it that we could walk up to and stare at and it was like up there in the rocks and that was fairly, fairly certain that was the spot that the map was showing, so that must be something else. Um, unless, actually, hmm, because we came through right about there, because right here would be, whoa, 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 okay, yeah, what, right here would be the, uh, the place past Farley's house. No. What? The hell are we? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Man, I'm getting kind of confused with all this, to be honest. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that, that over there, that's the back entrance to Farley's house. 
Yeah, with the tunnel. Okay. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I just had like a a brain dead moment. And this whole thing, if we go as far to the left as we can, this still only leads us up here. But then this is farther to the left, so that should lead us somewhere else entirely. Huh. Oh, okay, I see. So that's all the same area. This just leads us up onto a hill. Ooh, that looks like it leads behind the tower. Okay. All right, let's leave that for last then. I'll remember this is here. And let's go this way now because this should lead over on top of the water wheel, which we can't actually get up to because it's turned right now. And, uh, hmm. Oh, I know what to do. If we go back down and just close this gate, we can go through the front door of Farley's house, which we opened, in order to get across it. All right. And I know there's a tunnel right there that I'm walking past. I know. But I like to try and do one thing at a time as I remember them in order to you know, to keep it all straight in my head and everything. So let's go do that first real quick. I'm gonna run. Um, I think this is faster to get there. Either way, it takes quite a while because we have to go across the entirety of Hunrath. So, yeah. We'll just run through town, close up the thing. And this area is like, I really love how much they've done with this one area. It feels like densely packed, yet still spaced out. Which I know is like such a vague way of describing it, but really it does. It feels like they've managed to put a lot of attention and detail and everything like that. and a lot of puzzles and everything into this one area. Um, maybe that to make it move to the left. There you go. I thought the middle one was supposed to make it Yeah. I thought the middle one was supposed to make it just stay in the middle. Yeah, when we tried it in the middle, it didn't move at all. That's, uh, hmm. Oh, well, I guess they're pulled too much out of the water to drag on it much when it's vertically like that. So, yeah, this is still locked. We'll obviously need to get down behind the... Oh, that's probably... I'm an idiot. That's probably where the... That tunnel right there, that's where we just were... That probably just leads down to a staircase and we could have just opened that door. I thought... I was, uh... Like, assuming the whole time that we would need to find some type of key or a password or something to open the door. Kind of overthinking it. Again, there's some of that, you know, old-school Riven type of, uh, thinking where, uh... You know, in Riven, right at the beginning of the game, there's a puzzle where you have to get under a door. Or, I mean, where you have to get through a locked door. And there's a huge hole under the door. And the solution is to crawl under the door. And that's like the... Kind of the go-to example that a lot of people use for why the puzzles in Riven are so good. Because so many of them are designed like that. Where the answer's, you know, completely logical to what you think you would do in you know, in real life and all that. Okay. Now, despite the frame rate drops and everything else, we are here. The platform has moved, and now that I've wasted so much of your time, let's go down to this tunnel to see what's down there, which we already... Oh, hey, whoa. No, actually. Oh, okay, so that doesn't lead to the door at all. Ha. Huh. I did the right thing, accidentally. 
Yeah, that would be, uh, according to the map, that should lead to the other end of the wall. Um, which we don't want to go to just yet. Because we can just walk across here and do this. Oh boy. I sure hope that doesn't s show up in the thing, in the recording. Awesome. What was this? Oh, that was the, uh... That was the bar holding back the, whatchamacallit, from turning. Yeah, th that bar was pressed down here, and it stopped it from turning uh, clockwise the other way. Which, now, we don't really need it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, th this, this would be able to get us to the other side. Okay, sweet. Sweet, awesome. But now with the thing turned, even though we now have this path opened, we can't get over there, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to go back down and around. Yeah, apologies in advance. I don't think it'll show up in the recording right now with my voice and all that, but uh, my neighbor upstairs is playing very bad rap music very loudly. And, uh, isn't much I can do right now to stop that. So I'm just gonna have to hope it doesn't show up in the recording. I think it's too distant for the microphone to pick it up. Hopefully. I will hope and pray that it does not. Okay. Now this path leads all the way around to the tower. Or it doesn't, I guess it doesn't lead around. It just leads to the tower. Oh, that's a whole thing. Let me pick up my chair because the freaking chair's falling down. Oh, hey, that's a that's another phone dial thingy. Okay, cool. Hmm. Is there anything else we can interact with besides the phone dial? Not by the looks of it. All right. All right, let's try pressing the button. Let me guess, doesn't work. Nope, doesn't work. Okay. Let me get that phone number then. The uh, phone number for the place. I don't remember what it was, but we found it in the garage on a magazine. The phone number advertising some kind of business. So let's try. Um, that spot should be one. Let's get closer. And ooh, ooh, ooh. unlock the cursor. Thank you. Okay, so that spot should be zero, and that should be one. So the number would be, where'd it go? I just had it. One, five, one, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, and cool, it's showing us on the side there too. All right, cool, 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 good. One, five, 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 four, three. Uh-oh. Okay, so there's not enough space on the keypad to enter a uh, full phone number. That's a bit of a bummer. There's only six slots there. So we need a six number code for this. Okay. All right. That's cool. That's fine. Pad back down. Um, in that case, is there any way to reset this to zero? Oh, okay, it just does it automatically. All right. Well, in that case, yeah. Let's just cancel it all out. There you go. That way, next time when we, next time when we come back, it'll uh, it'll be reset. So that we can start putting in numbers and it'll just do them basically. Alright, anything else we can see from here that might be helpful? Doesn't seem to be. Okay. Really pretty caves and pretty architecture here again. They clearly took the time to carve out the path and clean it up and everything for people to walk across. Pretty nifty. Alright, now let's try going through the teleporter here. 
This should take us to the other end of the wall. Ooh. We're on the rocks. This is a bit messy. Oh, <laughs> it's this thing that we saw earlier. It's just, just like a guardrail to stop people from falling off. And it's clearly not very effective because there's a huge hole in the middle of it. If we weren't a video game character with a massive hitbox, we'd fall right through that. Easily. Oh well. Ooh, and we can go over here too. And there's a thing. There's lots of things. Okay, let's check out the wall first though. All along the watchtower. Alright. Right about now, that's, yeah, that's Farley's house right there. And the tower's right there, so just in case anybody else is as confused as I sometimes get with the layout of this place. The teleportation thing constantly turning you around, it, you know, it gets a little bit confusing sometimes. Just a little bit. Okay. So this just takes us to the bottom of the tower, by the looks of it. Hmm. Let me guess. Locked. Oh, we can't even interact with it. Despite the fact that there's a big handle on it. Okay. So, another place where you have to put in a password. Um... Let me try just real quick. I know it's unlikely. 6341. That was... Oh, nope. Okay, so this just takes a three... three-digit password. Alright, so let me... Oh, hey, you know what? Let me try... 406. Yeah. Hey, what the hell? How did that work? <laughs> okay, hold up. Let me, let me, oh boy, let me catch up my thoughts to what just happened. So first of all, we need a six digit code for the other side. So let me, I'm writing this down in my notebook. So apologies for the pause in gameplay. Six digit code for, uh, what's, uh, phone side of tower, I guess. Yeah, that that makes sense. Phone side of tower. Okay, and three digit code for other side of tower. Of tower, and that ended up being 406. Now, 406, for those of you who might not remember, is the number that we found in the last episode when I tried putting in the uh, the 15, the weird sideways 15 thing. I tried putting that into the Valane number structure thingy, and um, the sideways 15 actually didn't work. It didn't show a valid number. It ended up auto-correcting to a different combination but that combination equaled 406. So is that what we were supposed to do? I guess, uh, cause obviously we know that they were, they were in the middle of like a war and they were expecting a big battle to come, so they were locking the whole place down. Did they actually go to the lengths of creating a false number in the Valane numbering system? And the false number, if put into a Valane, um, computer terminal thing would autocorrect to a number that was actually the correct passcode? Like, that's kind of crazy that they would go to those lengths. I mean, I guess that maybe they had to. That's how, you, that's how you do stuff like that, right? You input, you know, you make codes for things when you're in the middle of a war and you need stuff to stay hidden. I guess. But still, yeez. Jeez. Okay. First of all, first things first, get this freaking board off of here. Oh, okay. Or not get it off. Just turn it. 
So now we can get out here, which is out. Yep, this is to the other side of the tree with the weird gadget below us. This is the path that leads around the section of the tree. Okay, I like this. I like we're getting lots of doors opened. And this is the elevator that was on the other side of the door with the phone thing. Not activated though. Hmm. I don't suppose it goes down. Nope. Okay, so we need to... I mean, the, the elevator should have power. We turned on power for the entire town. Um, but I guess maybe the elevator doesn't activate until we can get that six-digit code to go into the phone-looking thingy. The rotary phone input device. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that. Alright. Um, doesn't seem to be anything over there except for some junk. Uh, ugh, this would be the, where the mayor lives, isn't it? All right, Mayors, Luther Roscoe, 500 BH to 3 BH, Carl Hunrath, 0 to 10 to 20 AH, John Farley, Benjamin Sims, Carolyn Farley, Joseph Peter Jansen, okay, to present. Yeah, he was the one who greeted us. Um... So, have they been here for nearly 17,000 years in total across all of their various lifetimes? Or is this... No, it couldn't be. I mean, this Benjamin Sims guy alone would have had to have been alive for over 300 years to serve from 13... 140 AH to 16 945 AH. Yeah, he would have had to have been over 300 years. And then friggin' Carl Hunrath served for 10,220 years, according to this. They must be using a different number system entirely. Um, for sure. The, these must not be years. Or maybe they're years, but they're, they could be years in a, uh, different, like, alien, uh, calendar system or something? Or maybe, um, well, because actually, in real life, the, uh, dates and years and everything like that are based off of the, like, rotation of the sun and the, the four seasons and everything like that, um, so it's all, like, built into nature. Maybe a single year is really short here in Hunrath. Maybe, uh, Although, obviously, it's not represented in gameplay, because that would be, you know, extra unnecessary steps for the developers to take to initiate a day and night cycle type of thing. Um, maybe, uh, you know, the day and night just passes really quickly here, and maybe the seasons pass by really quickly. But anyway, there's another door open, so that'll be a, a shortcut back to the garage sphere side of things, which again was another door that we couldn't get into that I just assumed we would need some type of passcode or something for, again, kind of overthinking things occasionally. What's this porthole for? Can't see anything interesting from either side of it. We saw this the other time, and it just showed, showed nothing. Actually, I'm pretty sure when we saw this from the other side the first time, at the beginning of the game, there was nothing but blackness on the other side. I think that's maybe because the lights were off, but there's a big hole in the ceiling that the, uh, the natural light should have been coming through, but, uh, oh well. I guess that's not the biggest deal. Alright. Take a quick look around. Oh, Mayor's got some stuff on his thing. Oh, hey, a compass. Ooh, listen to that music. So this is a compass, right? I think so. But it can't seem to find north. I guess that explains the, uh, spooky music. 
yeah. Makes sense with them being here in this sphere on a completely alien planet and everything like that. Makes sense that either um, maybe they're somehow in like a parallel universe that has no North Pole and therefore the compass doesn't work. Or um, perhaps there's just a lot of machines and stuff around that interfere with the with the compass. And this is a another one? But this is weird. North, south, east, and oast? The hell's that? This looks like a compass, except it has an O instead of W for west. And also the needle doesn't have any differentiation between what's supposed to be north or not. The needle is equally the same length on both sides, and it's the same color on both sides as well. And that one seems to be stuck, whereas this one's just fucking spinning all around, going crazy. Okay. Yep, Mare DCTD. Wonder why he has a license plate on his thing. For blah blah blah, may all your doors stay open. Ha 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 ha. Somebody gave the mayor a doorstop and wrote a funny little thing on it. Okay. There's another warning thing. There's a big notebook. And back here. Ooh. Alien sculpture-y things. Wow award for community excellence. Okay. And a bunch of books that we cannot read. Okay, cool. Well, unfortunately, I'm all out of time for this episode, so I'm going to end it here. And when we come back, I will read the entirety of that journal. And then we'll keep exploring all of our options with the different paths we've opened up. So yeah, we'll see you all next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Thank you.